So we're talking about the weather. Well, <laughs> I was making joke of the fact that just a couple of days ago, I was singing how my tan is over. And lo and behold, it seemed that somehow it came back again. <laughs> well, we have with us in the studio this morning, Dr. Manso Matazu, who is the general manager of research at NIMET. Maybe you'll have an explanation for what happened. So we had a, a really intense season of the Hamilton uh, just sometime in December and then it seemed that there was a dry spell in the middle like we had now entered the dry season properly but it looks like the Hamilton never really did go away. Yeah actually thank you very much. Uh, uh, as part of our seasonal rainfall prediction the, yeah. the one component is the Hamilton forecast yeah. uh, which normally start from December until late March in the north. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton comes in cycle yeah. uh, of uh, four to six days uh, of varying magnitude and intensity. So what we have witnessed uh, some few days ago is uh, another reoccurrence of the next cycle of the Hamilton. So atmosphere is uh, connected just like our body system. Uh, what is happening in Europe is having a direct influence on the pressure system over the Sahara Desert, which also we experience migration of cold wind into our system with the intensity of the strong wind and the dust particles. So it's, it's, it's a normal phenomenon, uh, but uh, as part of our focus that people should adhere to the advisories, especially those that are allergic to dust and mm. the dry uh, winds, and also, we should also take cognizance of the decline in temperature in terms of our uh, clothing and also the food that we take to keep it, us warm. Especially. Indeed, yeah. because I mean, the cold in Joss and Plaza State this yes. year was pretty serious, serious enough for us to do a story on it uh, yeah. because people were complaining that it, it was really, really cold. Yeah. Um, was there something responsible for that? Yeah, actually, uh, as we indicated in the season around for production that we yeah. made to public by our minister, Senator Hadi Sirika, on Tuesday uh, this week, uh, that uh, last year was an El Nino year, and El Nino year is associated with extreme events. So, but uh, for 2020, it's a neutral year, that is a fairly normal year, but uh, atmosphere has a, what is called an inertial uh, phenomena. Uh, so we're still having the pulsation of the effect of the El Nino into the, the system. Mm -hmm. And El Nino is associated with extreme events. In terms, you remember the high intensity range that we witnessed 2019, and also now we are seeing intensification of the cold in, in the country. Uh, areas recorded seven degrees uh, minimum and uh, eight degrees. It's, it's, it's associated with the changing climate and especially in direct response to the El Nino Southern Oscillation to our weather systems in the country. Okay, so mm. now the uh, 2020 seasonal rainfall prediction has been launched. Yes. Uh, you have said this is a neutral year. Yes. In other words, is it that we shouldn't expect flooding? Uh, flooding, uh, you can categorize flooding even in a normal year. Uh, that uh, is, uh, is an unusual stage of water. Uh, especially uh, one category of flooding is flash floods, when there is high intensity of rain of let's say 50 millimeter of rain, if it falls in within a limited time of time, uh, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, that generates a lot of runoff. And especially if we don't clear drainages and also our land use practices, especially city plans, so that tend to generate uh, floods within cities. We have seen this in Lagos uh, and, and many parts of the country last year. So, and also the other category of floods is the riverine floods, uh, when the rivers are fully charged and also uh, with operation of some dams upstream. So the opening of the spillway gates also could trigger some floods. Uh, even in a normal year, as uh, we predicted in 2020, uh, we could not also rule out uh, flash flood and also riverine floods, especially uh, during July to September, when the rain reaches peaks. And also we have a lot of soil moisture that could trigger floods. So they are very, very likely. And in our advisories, we advise the government. Uh, floods agencies. are so likely. Yeah, very likely. River floods are likely. And, and flash floods And too. flash floods, exactly. So, uh, but uh, we, Nigerians should, uh, we, we have made the forecast and also uh, indicated the time 
for these floors and also the precautionary advisories, especially with regards to planning and also a response by the citizens of the country to city plans also. Uh, especially, we also release our daily forecast uh, on our social media and in some uh, network uh, of stations, so people should adhere to this and also respond appropriately. Because flood is a natural phenomenon, uh, and especially in this era of climate change, at a temperature increases, we tend to see intensification of high intensity storms that generate these floods. Mm. Let's go to Lagos <clears throat> now and take some questions from my colleagues. Well, thank you, Mark. Now, uh, in that report we saw just be before we started this conversation, it began uh, with the farmer saying, well, this has been good. But then he said that, please make this available to communities. And towards the end of that same report, you could hear the, the, the anchor of events saying, your excellencies, pick your copy. And it bring, brings the question, just how public is this prediction which you say you have made public? How public is it? How much has it gotten to the grassroots, the people that are really affected, you know, when these, you know, weather issues begin? Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we normally release this forecast uh, in a very good lead, lead time. Uh, the season, as we predicted, will start by end of February in the coastal areas. And uh, we release it almost one month in advance uh, so that to allow for all uh, citizens of the country and MDAs uh, to properly integrate the focus into their plan of activities. Uh, we've been uh, into partnership with a lot of uh, uh, organizations uh, in many parts of the country. Uh, we downscale this forecast uh, at state level, especially on invitation. Uh, but uh, one additional feature of this year's uh, forecast is that we detail it at local government level. And we are ready also to partner with state governments and other relevant agencies to come down prior to the beginning of the season to downscale this forecast at local government and district level. Uh, climate services has a value chain, <clears throat> just like in agri value chain. So we at our level, we generate the focus and it's a very perishable product. So that's why we released it early. And uh, we invited various stakeholders across the country, uh, cutting across all the socioeconomic sectors of the country. And uh, in such doing, uh, we anticipate that these uh, stakeholders will now downscale and relay this information to the various uh, uh, users of the focus. Uh, but uh, our doors are open for partnership with uh, relevant MDS. Uh, for this year, we are also uh, planning to translate this focus uh, at, at, at regional level uh, based on predominant languages that uh, people speak uh, so that uh, the information gets down to the communities. At right. state now level that we partner with, we, we, we conduct a roving workshop, especially with extension officers and uh, climate change agents uh, to release the information uh, for public use. So uh, the, the whole issue is partnership. Uh, at, at, at our level, we generate the focus, uh, but uh, we need uh, a very clear platform that uh, users should uh, also get the information. Uh, so this type of interview is another way of uh, relaying this information uh, to various users of the country. Our social media and websites uh, is www.nimet.gov.ng. Uh, we are on Twitter, we have a uh, uh, Facebook account, so people can always log on and get additional information. And uh, these platforms are interactive in nature. You can ask questions and then also we respond to this. Right, now, aside the rain, Nimet also forecasts a dry spell. Uh, that might last up to 10 to 21 days. And you mentioned states like Niger, Bochi, Jigawa, Sokoto, Zamfara, Katsina, Kano, Kebi, Yobe, and Borno between the months of June and July. And we understand how important water is to that area. So what does this mean for, you know, the talk about desert encroachment? And what are the suggestions in place such that this wouldn't come as a shock? And we know what usually happens right after that. Okay, uh, actually the uh, 
part of the components of our focus is a dry, the dry spell focus. Uh, the dry spell is a period of uh, absence of rain that prolong to uh, uh, more than five days. And uh, that is having serious implication, especially to uh, agriculture, uh, because this dry spell normally comes after the onset. And the onset is the planting period when the moisture uh, in the farmlands are well established. Uh, so as we predicted uh, in this more than about 11 states in the country, especially the Bofa states and some Sudan and Sahelian parts of the country, uh, uh, we advise that farmers should devise a means of uh, soil moisture conservation techniques uh, and uh, also uh, they should interact very well with the agri extension officers. Uh, to get additional information on GAP, and which is good agricultural practices. Uh, so if you have an alternative means of uh, uh, moisture providing additional water into your farmland, that is also very, 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 very good uh, methods. And in parts of the country, they practice what is called half moon, uh, which uh, this type of agriculture tends to uh, retain moisture and also improve fertility of the soil. Uh, so this is very critical uh, because uh, uh, last year, 2019, so farmers uh, lost a lot of uh, uh, farm inputs and uh, resources due to this prolonged uh, dry spell forecast that uh, uh, we have provided. Uh, but uh, the most important thing is for the state government to identify uh, this period and also engage in sensitizing the farmers with the alternative uh, uh, soil moisture conservation techniques that we have provided in our forecast. So on a lighter note now, earlier on, Maupe was talking about Hamatan, and we know that's the closest to winter that we get in this country. But then you said something that the, the atmosphere is related. So what happens in Europe has an effect on what happens in Nigeria. And we've seen that climate change is a big thing. So let me just cut the chase to the question. Is there a possibility that in the coming years or decades there might be snow in this part of the world? Uh, uh, actually, uh, climate change is associated with uh, extreme events. And uh, extreme events in terms of uh, rainfall or precipitation, in terms of uh, increasing temperature, uh, in terms of even the severity and magnitude of the dry season, uh, is, 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 is very likely uh, that, uh, but in the nearest future, we don't foresee such events uh, because you could only have this when you have sub zero te temperatures prevailing. Uh, we, we don't expect uh, much of that. Uh, and, and even if it does happen in the coming decades, uh, it, 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 will, it will be a short-lived uh, phenomena which will not have much implications on the activities of uh, uh, our, our citizens. But uh, what we should consider is the, how we can adapt to a changing climate, especially rainfall pattern, is what uh, normally affects our socioeconomic livelihoods. Uh, so, and that is why we are provided in the forecast uh, that uh, uh, there are indicators of climate change, which NIMED has already uh, identified and also explained. And uh, these indicators are very clear. And uh, we have also various MDS that are responsible in uh, creating awareness and also uh, institutionalizing the mitigation and adaptation uh, strategies for various socioeconomic activities. I, I will give you an example like for farming activities where you have, uh, we are witnessing high intensity, increasing in high intensity rainfall activities across the country and also the shortening of the growing season, that is the length of the rainy season. So if the, and also another factor is the late arrival of the rains in, in some years. So when you have shortening of the rainy season in terms of the duration and also 
late arrival of the rains. So uh, this has serious implication on agriculture and food security. Do so, Dr. Matazus, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, sure, but just yeah. quickly, I, I want, because we have very little time left, I want yeah. our viewers who are watching you this morning to be able to hold on to something. Yes. What would you like them to hold on to in terms of, well, maybe not, not everyone is a farmer, maybe a, a huge population is, are, are farming, but what would you like Nigerians to take away uh, from the predictions of MIMET? Yeah, actually, uh, I will just start by saying that uh, weather is life and life is weather. Mm -hmm. So for us to continue to do our daily uh, plans using weather, uh, for this year, uh, we, are, we have uh, forecasted a very uh, a normal to near normal uh, year, uh, but uh, with some occasional extreme events that uh, could trigger uh, floods and also some abnormalities of uh, for dry spell. So the, the, the single message is that uh, uh, this year is, is, is going to be a normal to near normal year. Uh, and also farmers should, and other users of our products should take this advantage of utilizing the information that we have provided, especially the planting period, the length of the season, and also the, the, the rainfall amount. So uh, with this, uh, and also the other component is the flash flood uh, forecast that we have provided. So NEMA and other uh, state emergency agencies should please uh, also take into cognizance with this. Uh, we have also provided in the forecast the temperature forecast. Uh, this prediction of night and daytime temperatures shows some abnormalities between February and um, April. So, and this is the meningitis period. This, What's the abnormality we're noticing? The abnormality is the increasing uh, nighttime temperatures and daytime temperatures uh, across some, some states in the country during this period. And uh, this period is also the meningitis period, so uh, the health uh, authorities should take into cognizance with our focus and do their planning uh, to avoid uh, epidemics. Uh, we have also provided a malaria forecast based on the relationship between temperature, humidity, and the vegetation across uh, most part of the country from January. So we also advise that uh, practitioners in the health sector should also look into this and integrate the forecast into their plan. Uh, weather is a natural when phenomenon. When is malaria going to be most rampant, based on uh, your predictions? Uh, mostly when there is high moisture. Uh, the, the, what period of the year is that? Uh, that's uh, from, from June to October and parts of November. But uh, in some parts, extreme, the coastal areas, they will be witnessing increasing incidence of uh, malaria from February this year. So, uh, and all this uh, contained in the, our forecast and uh, very detailed and uh, we advise uh, that uh, practitioners should uh, use this information. Uh, the focus is already online, so people can have access to it by logging on to www.nymed.gov.ng and we are free also open for consultation. Uh, and especially we look for, forward to having collaboration with different sectors because climate services cut across all sectors. What sort of services would you offer? Uh, we, 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 we provide uh, three categories of services in this country. We do public weather forecasting uh, services uh, to, the, to the nation. We also do support services. Support services, we support other government organizations and uh, NGOs with information and that are valuable for their operations. We also do telemed products and services. I've just been told that now that <laughs> Might be charging you for adverts. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much you, for coming you. on thank Sunrise so Daily this morning. Yeah, thank and thank you, so you for much. the work you're doing mm -hmm. at NIMET. We sincerely hope that people make use of the information which you provided. Thank Dr. You. Mansur Matazu is the General Manager of Research at the Nigerian Meteorological uh, Agency.